help but just express my utmost gratitude for the life that I live. Like, I think I've done a lot of things. I've done many things. I jumped out of a plane on my 21st birthday in Hawaii on Magic Mushrooms, which was the same day that I just so happened to hit 100,000 subscribers. I've fucking gone viral multiple times for my love and admiration for plant-based medicine. I've traveled to Africa with a group of people who like my content and formed amazing friendships and for everlasting memories with them. You know, I've, I've, I've loved, <laughs> I've lost, <laughs> and by far, I think like I've experienced so much, but this right here, <laughs> this right here is my we made a moment. And I am just like so grateful. I can't, I can't help but continue to express it. So much is in alignment and I feel it so much here and I'm just grateful. Thank you, you know, thank you for seeing the light in me because this is literally the, I, and, and it's so funny because I haven't even done the ayahuasca yet, but this is the most insane experience. I just pulled up. You know, I just pulled up and took a shower. <laughs> like this Rhythmia comes with so many amazing perks. We get uh, two colonics, um, a spa, a, 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 a massage at the spa, um, health checkups, 24 hour like, um, the clinic is open 24 hours. Everybody is available for health if you need it, whenever you need it. Like it's just so many perks to like, it's just so many perks to being here that I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. And for that, thank you. Um, there is a breath work class, which I'm so excited for in like less than 20 minutes. So that starts at 5.30. I'm gonna go to that and then I'm gonna go to dinner. <laughs> it's been a very long travel day. I'm pretty tired. This morning my baby took me to the airport. I just, there was no reason for me to include that. I just wanted to, I just wanted to say, for the record. I mean, I took me to the airport. Tomorrow I'm gonna get my first colonic. It's gonna be in the morning and wake up, eat breakfast, things of that sort. I'm really excited to see about the food here. Um, and Monday is the first day of the plant ceremonies. Um, they start around like 5, 5.30, I think. And I'm excited for that, of course. But, you know, honestly, to be honest, I am super excited for everything. But um, particularly the workshops. Like, I'm really eager to learn more about ayahuasca and to learn more about what I could possibly expect. I I do breath work. I do it. But the experience that I just had, oh my, oh my god, I'm never, I'm never fucking yo, like out of my body. I was out of my body. I was out of my body. Oh my god, I ain't even been here for. I've been here for like five hours. I was out of my being. I am truly amazed by my experience and we ain't even did no medicine we were doing medicine we ain't even did no ayahuasca like bro I don't even know how to explain yo my hands felt like I had it felt like I was holding hands with God the entire time like my hands the energy the frequency was just electric this is so amazing pineapple juice everything here is so good oh my god
Um, now we have we're like overlapping with the people who were here from last week and us newcomers for this week. So everybody's like communicating, talking about the previous week's experience. I love it. Everyone is like, yo, my miracle this, my miracle that, healed this, smiling that. What's your name? <laughs> like, where are you from? I'm like, yo, I'm loving it. These are my kind of people. I've got a mix of like, this is um, chicken tagine. Um, and I don't even eat chicken like that, like ever really. But if really me got it and they're serving it to me, I trust this good, great chicken. White rice. These some kidney beans, I think. This is like a lentil mixture of lentils and rice. Broccoli. I have some like potato type hash browns, I think. I don't know what it was. But, oh my god, I'm just so happy to be eating. Because, bro, I've been starving all day. So it is the first full day slash second day at Rhythmia and it's so pretty out here and it rained last night. It's so freaking humid. So I was trying to record on my camera, but none of the footage was um, the lens wouldn't stop fogging, but I'm just so excited to be here. There was a yoga class that happened at seven, but I'm like, bro, it's, all, it's like 7.15 right now and I'm like... I'm so tired. I'm just gonna go get breakfast and then um, come back to my room because I have a YouTube video going live today and I need to finish the thumbnail for that and I'm two hours behind. So I want that to be live by like 10 p.m. here, I mean 10 a.m. here. Um, but other than that, ooh, I should definitely chill in one of these hammocks over there. Yeah. So let me explain to you what breakfast is. There is a kale and potato hash scrambled eggs this is a vegan banana muffin watermelon pineapple jam strawberry jam and these are like banana pancakes i think and then i got a spirulina wait no not the spirulina smoothie the detox smoothie this has like coconut water bananas mint parsley and some other stuff i think and then this is pineapple juice mixed with coconut water <sighs> i feel very spoiled and this is just my water. And look at this cute cup they gave us. I love that. Forever keeping that. Cherishing that. Bro, somebody please tell me what the name of that bird is. That bird sound like Mario going in the tunnels. That bird sound like it is in a video game. That bird made me feel like I was in a simulation. Listen to it one more time. Like, where? Like, bruh, the tropics are crazy. Because I'm like... Yo, the insects out there, you really forget just how different America is versus other parts of the world when you hear shit like that. But these people who were here last week, bro, they got a glow to them. They all got this like crazy aura. Aura, aura. Our auras naturally extend out into the ethers, but on these people, it's obvious. So rewarding. I'm so excited. It's amazing. <laughs> like, I feel like I cry every time I talk about it. Really? It's, yeah, I'm like fully. I haven't gotten to talk to anybody who's been here last week because today is like my first full day of being yeah, here. Yeah, but you were in the breathwork class last yeah, night. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you're already in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already in it. <laughs> it. I mean, it is so special. I'm excited. What happens here. It's Thank just like, you. there's no way to put it into words. Thank like, you'll you. feel it in the ceremony tonight, and mm -hmm. it is just like, it's unbelievable. Thank you. So have the best week ever. <laughs> have the best week. Will do. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Thank you so much. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> I just woke up. Well, um, I just got up. Um, and I just wanted to inform you that today is the day. Today is the day that I do ayahuasca. It is like 7:40 a.m. right now. And um, there are one or two classes, workshops that I attend today. Yeah, to be honest, I haven't been getting good sleep. I've been, it's been two nights here and I have been waking up in the middle of the night consistently. It's been taking me a long time to fall asleep. And then I'll wake up like way before my alarm. And then I'm like, well, fuck it, bro, just get up. And I don't really know why. It's not necessarily a lack of physical comfort, 
I think I'm just so excited. Oh, oh my God, when I saw the perfectionistic and why that split. It is officially time for me to attend ceremony. I am so grateful. I am still very excited. And um, yeah, wish me luck. Have one all white. So let's do it. The next day. <sighs> It's 1 p.m. next day. Um, I can't even tell y'all about the journey I had last night. I do want to express some of the physical reactions that I had, cause I didn't, I, I didn't, I, I didn't expect. I, I didn't expect what happened. <laughs> I have been struggling with insomnia for a few months. And when I would go to sleep, I would try to sleep all throughout the night, but I'd constantly like wake up and I'm constantly tossing and turning. And physically, I just feel uncomfortable when I sleep. So there's some context. Last night, it took a very long time for the medicine to, um, for me to feel or see anything. When I did start to feel and see the stuff, I had to drink like three cups. Like I was three cups in. We drunk the medicine at seven. And I tell y'all, I had visuals probably around like, you know what? My conception of time was completely wrong, but I will, t I will completely off. I don't know if it's wrong, but I will say I had visuals and throughout the entirety of after I drank the Aya, <laughs> the Aya, ayahuasca um i just felt a, a, a growing sense of uncomfortability just uncomfortable tossing and turning on this mattress literally i had my head on the mattress my legs like all on the floor like um i was standing up some sitting up sometimes trying it was just very uncomfortable i have visuals went on an experience met god Talk to her. When I tell y'all, it was a trip, but it was even more of a trip when the ceremony was officially over and they cut on all the lights. I don't know exactly what triggered me at this point. I had been tossing and turning damn near that whole time. And when I was having the visuals, I actually stopped. And I realized that when I was having these visuals, it became so much harder to move my body Cause I'm like, I'm like the, I'm like, where am I right now? Like, am I in my body or am I out of my body? Like, and, and how am I experiencing both at the same time? So when I would have visuals, I would kind of just like bury my face into like this and I just could not fucking move. And so they turn on the light, bro. And they were kind of explaining to me later that maybe like, maybe like the light may have triggered me or something. But when they turned on this light and told everybody to crowd up around the front, I could not fucking move. <laughs> I could not move. And my stomach, it just... It was just growing and increasing in uncomfortability. And I'm like, all right, bro, to be honest, what end are you about to come out of? Because for hours, I'm telling you for like fucking hours, like five plus hours, I just, I was trying to like, I wanted to throw up cause I knew that that was gonna happen. But, and honestly, I didn't want to shit. But um, all I could m manage was like, a few like burps and that was really it and so i was just like oh maybe i i guess i'm just not gonna burp 30 minutes later after they're finished with the talk and everyone is dismissed i go to stand up and to leave and y'all i fucking stood up and started walking to the exit and i passed the fuck out in what may have been in the most dramatic of ways like, I don't know what the fuck I looked like, but <laughs> I passed out and like hit the fucking wall and like 
fell on the floor. And I think that I have a fear of passing out because I'd be afraid that like I'm gonna die. It feels like I'm dying when I pass out. I remember it being dark and it felt like clash, 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 clash. Like it felt like a lot of movement. Then I remember there was, you know, medical staff there and very quickly, um, you know, the facilitators and people started to huddle around me. <laughs> Literally, they were just trying to wake me up and I'm laying on my back and then I'm like, I gotta throw up, throw up. I, I looked at them and I was like, throw up, throw up. <laughs> Throw up, throw up. They give me somebody else's puke bucket. I ain't give a fuck. I just, uh, you know. Uh. And then I kind of lay back down for a second. And I just wanted some water so bad. I just wanted to hydrate. I am a hydrated shoddy. And so when they said we couldn't drink water for the duration of the ceremony, I was like, damn, I really want some water. I couldn't even drink no water next because next thing you know, I had to go to the bathroom. And then I'm sitting on the fucking toilet and I pass out on the fucking toilet, bro. One of the ladies was outside waiting for me and, and the, the, she had uh, um, given me some privacy and I don't even know when she came in there because the next thing I know, she's waking me up like, Trinity, Trinity, you know, give me your hand, give me your hand. And I'm like, bro, I need to, sh I need to finish shitting. But I kept passing out. <laughs> I kept passing out. She gets me up to leave the restroom. And then the second I step out of the restroom, I pass the fuck out again. It was a lot. And I'm like, oh my God, this is an intense experience. I pass out, slightly waking up to a, a handful of people around me. The shaman is there. And there, I, you know, I, I, I was gonna try to explain to y'all what he did or like what this means but i don't know um exactly um but they have like this tincture and they put it in their mouth i don't want to say any of this incorrectly so just know they had a tincture that was whiskey that had a certain root soaked into it and whenever they would put this on us it would help energetically to Honestly, I would say, quote unquote, bring me back to life because that's what it felt like it was doing. But it was just a, it was just a scary experience because I don't like I don't like throwing up. I don't like having diarrhea. I don't like passing out. <laughs> and Aya had me doing all that. Eventually, I was able to get on the soul train, which is the little shuttle bus they have that will take you wherever you need to go. Literally, though, when I got here, I passed out. And that's another thing, like since I got here, I have not been getting good sleep. I have not been getting good sleep. And I knew it wasn't like the environment or anything like that, but it was just we. I, I think that I felt very excited to for the ceremonies. So I feel like that has something to do with it, but I'm also like, um, I don't know, maybe that was like the insomnia like coming to a head cause I was like fucking exhausted all the time. Um, Oh, and that was another one of my lessons that like the intentions that they have is show me who I've become, merge me back with my soul at all costs, heal my heart. I definitely got a lot of glimpses of um, show me who I have become because of the tiredness and the uncomfortability. And I realize all the time I'm just kind of navigating out of tiredness uncomfortability, a dash of people pleasing, and like feeling like I have to do everything for myself. And then um, every a lot of things for other people. And it can be really difficult. Um, and because of that, it has made me aggressive. I have a short temper, um, or I had a short temper, irritable, and just like tired and just tired and not knowing how to rest and not listening to my body when I need um, to rest. So sleep ever since. And it's been great fucking sleep. That's another thing. I would do this thing where when I'd eat, I would just scarf down my food. 
scarf it down because I mean I love food but like I would always like view people who could eat slow and admire that and it would be difficult for me to like do it myself I sat down and I ate the slowest I've eaten in a long time and I enjoyed it I didn't have my phone I had my journal I just started to write out the trip that I had the visuals, the lessons I learned, meeting God. I'm very grateful for the experience, even though it was chaotic. And I know every night is different. Slick, nervous for tonight. But like I said in my last video, um, all the hardest parts of my life, I have experienced, conquered, and I did not die and I thrived because of it so yeah uh. i don't know what i was thinking when i decided to film audio on the beach because it just is too loud so i'm actually going to provide a voiceover with what i was saying because i don't feel like reiterating it in a whole nother clip <laughs> this has been quite the adventure and it's so funny because it's like, yeah, it's an adventure because I'm in another country, but it's truly an adventure because of all the places I've visited within myself. I've come to admire a lot more things about myself and just deeply, truly love myself fully and wholly in ways I didn't even know I didn't before or was possible. I'll share one of the biggest profound realizations for me. It was that the first way I was made out to feel like I was different was because of my Bell's palsy. With my Bell's palsy, people pointed out something being different or wrong with me when I wasn't even aware of that possibility. So at an early age, I learned how to defend myself and that looked like trying to convince the world that I loved myself so intensely, which I did love myself, but the origin that the love came from was coming from the wrong place. Before, I didn't need an origin, you know, I just loved myself. I learned how to defend myself at a very early age. I didn't realize how much that hurt because I've always been told, especially by my mom, that uh, I was aggressive in the way that I spoke and things of that sort. But it was interesting because I feel like, you know, she taught me how to do that. There were times where I would come home crying from school about people being mean to me. And the way that she'd have me respond is, you know, like, fuck them. You know, you love yourself, right? You like yourself, like, and that's enough. That's all that matters. It wasn't coming from a place of calm centeredness and certainty it was coming from fuck them defend yourself <laughs> and over this week i've been able to really shift that narrative and shift those limiting beliefs and express myself in a very healthy way and i've literally just been saying to myself i love you getting more in the habit of saying that okay so another thing with what I'm saying is that when I would think about myself, it would always be from the perspective of somebody else. So even with the life that I've manifested, I've envisioned myself doing a lot of different things. And when I do, I always fantasized about how it would look, like viewing myself, experiencing it, rather than experiencing the feeling of what that would feel like to, let's say, publishing, you know, my, my book or reaching 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. You know, I, I always viewed myself from outside of myself. Why? Because a part of me was always looking for that external validation. And I always wanted to make sure that I looked good so that people would perceive me in the manner that I wanted to be perceived. God damn, this is vulnerable. <laughs> I was just thinking about it in the ocean. Like everyone's self-love is going to look and feel so uniquely to themselves. And I'm just so grateful that I've been able to identify where my quote unquote split came from and heal that specifically. I'm wishing that kind of peace and clarity for everybody. 
So as I'm starting, you can already see, I had a very profound experience this week. This has definitely been the hardest thing that I've ever done. And I am so grateful to have persevered. I feel completely different and there have been a lot of physical differences that I've experienced. So I'm gonna share those experiences with you as well as talk about the visuals that I had, talk about some of the lessons I've learned and answer some of the questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. Nights two, three, and four, I didn't throw up again, but I definitely did have diarrhea for the rest of the the, the trip. Um, so those were my main physical experiences. Of course, it was uncomfortable in my like solar plexus stomach area. But other than that, that's really what I experienced physically. Um, now, when it comes to visuals, here's here's this, the things that I didn't tell y'all in the vlog clips. So I'm going to basically like just read um, as much as I can share. My first visuals that I experienced on night one um, revolved around, in my brain, this place came to me and I was just like, kingdom, this is a kingdom. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but I heard people talking about it where it was like a lot of like different little smiley faces and they were all making like different kinds of expressions towards me. It was interesting because they kind of like cascaded into like a, a, a castle um that was pretty far away in the distance but this castle had like golden light and everything was colorful and it was just a very interesting visual so i knew that i was there and i was enjoying myself and i was having a fine time and i was like okay so in class they were telling us that we need to what they said what's coming is going and to go to what is like dark or like unpleasant like because that is where you're going to find um, all of your shadow work pretty much and so eventually I was enjoying myself there and these little faces they cascaded me up into like this mountain I was looking up and when I look back down I seen uh, what I call I consider them to be like demons um, I seen a demon crawling towards me and to give you a visual of what this demon looks like if you watch Stranger Things season 2 the mind flare it looked like that but it had two arms and two legs and it wasn't that big it was kind of like probably like the size of the Demogorgon but it gave me like the energy of like the mind flare and I looked down and I was like hello like what are you about to show me? What are you about to show me about myself? And so I realized the more I was going up, I looked to my left and there was this like giant abyss that was red, white, and black. And there were kind of, there were faces in that, but instead of them being like cute and kind of smiley and just the faces, they were like people like reaching out like, uh, like an agony type shit. So um, I was like, all right. It's about that time. So I jumped into the abyss and I was just like, you know, falling and falling. And um, eventually at the bottom of the abyss, there was this like giant eel like creature that came up and it, 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 it bit me. Well, it didn't bite me. It swallowed me whole. There was a lot of swallowing in my visuals. Like even the second night, I like, I, I, even the third and fourth night, I experienced just being swallowed by so many creatures. But regardless, it digested me till I, it was all black and then I saw a slow zoom into a room. That's what it was. Um, I looked at the structure of the room and in the middle there was, oh, this room that I appeared in was a room in my paternal grandparents' house um, when I was a kid. So I knew in the room, it's funny because the room was painted red. And then in the middle of the room, there was a white safe. And so I walked up to the safe and somehow, some way, I just knew that there were different uh, codes for the safe and they were all four letter words. So it was like, I typed in the word fear. I typed in the word rape and I typed in a, like other four letter words that were pretty, you know, shitty. Um... And then it opened and a black octopus jumped onto me and it like consumed me pretty much. And one of the things they also told us is that there are different um, uh, beings that come to us and they often see a praying mantis, an octopus. I think there was another one, I forgot, but I saw the praying mantis and the octopus the most. So I got consumed by this octopus and then um, it was darkness and then a red door zoomed into focus, like from the back of the abyss, like to just slowly zooming into 
my frame of view and it looked like the door from insidious which is very funny because i bro when i was a kid i loved insidious the conjuring and it's even funnier because when i open the door i see a staircase going up and i was like okay i'm gonna go up and then out of nowhere a staircase going down appeared and i was like well we, we gotta go down into the basement like you know like they you know we gotta go to what's hard first so i go down into the basement and it's the basement from the conjuring if you've seen that movie the very first one and i knew something was down there so i kind of like announced like come out you know show yourself what are you what do i need to face right now a little three-year-old version of me walked out from behind the shelf and she looked so cute she looked like a little cherub like a little you know baby angel things of that sort and i was like oh like you know i was gonna be like come here and then i noticed that as she kept walking out she had her hand holding something and the more she walked out i seen that it was my cousin on my paternal side who was next to her and he's only four months older than me so both of them were like three and his he had a smile on his face that was really disturbing. His smile was just like unnatural, especially for a baby. Oh, like Fred from Courage the Cowardly Dog. And so I got her and I'm like, you know, like pushing him away. I've said this before, but that cousin in particular was the one who was sexually assaulting me for years of my young life. So I got her away from him and I hugged her close to me and I picked her up. I started to berate him for his actions, shame, disgust, anger, and he still kept the smile on his face as he slowly backed away. Then demons crawled over the edge and attached themselves to him. And suddenly I saw his demons, his trauma, the split, and a wave of sadness rushed over me. So now the split is something that they also taught us in those courses. Um, at Rhythmia where basically we're all born connected with our soul, you know, merge into our body and things of that sort. And somewhere early on, there is a split that takes place between us and our soul. Well, I don't want to say it like that, but like, for example, so my split was um, like early sexual assault and like just irritation and like the weird relationship that I've had with men. So some somewhere early on, I basically learned how to divide myself because I'm like, I can't be this authentic, vulnerable, soulful self because I have to be this version in order to not get hurt. I have to be aggressive. I have to defend myself in this way and navigate life in this manner because as I've, I've, I've been shown by the adults and the other people around me that it is not safe to have my vulnerability so intertwined within myself because people will do crazy terrible things i realize that so many of us are acting solely from out of the fucked up conditioning that was taught that taught us how to protect ourselves whether you were abused molested disrespected or just didn't receive the care you needed you built a shell which shows up differently in everybody and within that i was able to extend grace to him because of uh, that that inner knowing. And I couldn't hold on to any kind of anger in relation to that situation anymore. So that was one of the really big visual, that was the first visual that I had. Later on, I realized like in, in, in the classes after, I realized more about this visual. Oh, there were four questions that they told us to ask ourselves. I, compl I kind of forgot how they, um, Oh, how is this making me feel? So if you were to experience, um, like I was experiencing uncomfortability physically within the first session. And it was irritating because I'm like, I don't like being uncomfortable and I don't like being irritated. So I was taking note of that. I forgot what the other questions were, but one of them was like, when was the first time that I remember feeling this way? And so later on, when I was journaling, I realized the first time that I ever really felt irritable was when I was with that cousin at a very early age. He was very like, they said he had ADHD, but he was just always doing the most at every single chance he could get. So it was just irritating because I would just be there wanting to chill and just be myself and like, I don't know, maybe watch fucking cartoons and this nigga would come around just loud irrational trying to drag me outside always just trying to put me in situations to do things that i didn't want to do so irritability was the first emotion 
that I could really establish feeling with him. The second night was the scariest for me and the most intense, not physically, but just in every other aspect. So here's another thing to note. In class, they were telling us that each day kind of has a different theme. So Monday, it was the introduction to ayahuasca. Tuesday, it was going deeper. Wednesday, it was ladies night, like divine feminine energy. And um, Thursday, it was like a Colombian ceremony with Yahe. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, Yahe, which was a different brew, um, a different ayahuasca brew from what we experienced on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I heard them say that, but you know, you don't really, you don't really understand the weight of things until you experience them. So I'm sitting in ceremony on Tuesday, and it this the 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 uh, shaman who was leading that ceremony had a very divine a, ma a divine masculine energy. So I knew that I was going to be tapping into a lot more things in relation to that but I didn't realize just how deep I would go. They had an interesting playlist that was playing music the, the entire night and it was beautiful music, but there was one song in particular. I had already experienced a lot of swallows. I was being swallowed a lot by various creatures. I seen Gulb, if you don't, if you watch Adventure Time, um, I, it was like I was just falling in this dark abyss passing deep not only want to say demons but passing like entities and like some entities they will like uh, swallow me and others would like just kind of look at me as i'm passing them it was like a very interesting thing one of the songs in particular it just sounded like envision the adventure time introduction theme and if you please like get your life together if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But like how you can hear the wind, the, the birds chirping, the, the you can hear the way the camera is moving through the landscape. So that is kind of what it sounded like, this one song that came on. And when it happened, it was like the scene in Get Out when, what, what, what'd she say? Oh, fuck that. We're gonna keep using Adventure Time references. It was like the episode in Adventure Time when the lich was like fall, and that nigga Finn was like, <gasps> like he just, like he just fell, and it was just like the most intense falling into self possible. It felt like I was fucking melting. Fall. <sighs> like I just, it was like my vision was just like, like, I don't know, like I was just like a dust bunny just on the floor. Like instead of this body that I have and this perception that I have of, you know, the world, my everything just kind of just fell. It was the craziest shit ever is what I'm trying to say. If you, if you don't, if you didn't get that, it was the craziest thing ever, bro. And it was scary. It was, it was terrifying. I had never, felt that way and it felt like the most surrender possible. I went so deep to where I encountered like an entity. I don't know, I, I was in this place that all around me was just like eyeballs and like kind of like tentacles, like kind of like coming out a little bit and it was like the, the 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 place was just moving, like it was alive and everything was breathing. Like they just I don't I don't know how to explain it, but it scared me. Um and eventually I endured it enough to where I was able to relax into it and smile and crack a few jokes. But eventually I had to raise my hand and ask for some help. And thank God there were a lot of um, facilitators in the room um, who were able to assist. And by the grace of God, um, this woman, her name was Ashley, and she was this beautiful Costa Rican woman. <laughs> I raised my hand and she came to help. And I asked her if I wanted to go outside. I told her I was like kind of panicking and it was a lot going on. And she was like, okay, well, we can get you on the earth so you can ground. So she takes me outside. They get me a blanket. I'm laying out on the grass. And oh my God, the stars in Costa Rica are just fucking beautiful. And so I was just like looking up at them. And I 
the the feeling that I had it just felt like the way you would imagine like that episode of Gravity Falls I talk a lot about cartoons but you know the episode of Gravity Falls when they're falling in that pit the entire episode and I think they're telling stories or something it felt like that it, yes my back was on the ground but easily there was also nothing under me at the same time and it was pretty scary and I remember just looking at Ashley's beautiful face talking to her like just trying to express myself with whatever words I could grapple onto and um she was like she had her voice was so soft and she was like I can see it in your eyes that you know you're surrendering and it's the beautiful the most beautiful thing ever and I was like um I was like it feels so scary like this is this is terrifying and she was like yes all of our emotions just want to be felt and she wasn't the first person to say that but uh, I have been told over the week that like, you know, when that split happens, we learn how to express our emotions in a way that feels more digestible to the outside world. And we still have the emotions that we suppress. They don't go away. They don't blow away with the wind. You know, we still have connection with that. And uh, we spend our life trying to avoid it. We spend our life trying to avoid it and it's gonna come bubbling up one day and this was the moment for me and for me to be somebody who i feel very you know aware of my emotions and things of that sort it was interesting for me to just feel so deep within myself um and all i could do was cry all i could do was cry and like you know say a few words and things of that sort but she was just like yeah like all of our emotions want to be felt felt deeply felt honestly um and, and and at this moment like you're surrendering and you know that's that's the best that you could do <laughs> and it was very encouraging um and in that moment <laughs> i remember looking at her and i was like i fell in love and i felt i felt like a two-year-old saying that and she was like you fell in love with like somebody and i was like yes and i just felt so vulnerable admitting that um, to myself and to to her, I just it, it's just so funny for me to just think back on it because I was just like I fell in love. <laughs> I was like I'm in love with somebody, <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> then she says she says falling in love. She was like I fell in love before many times before, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. She was like falling in love is one of the most beautiful things that you can experience like in this earthly body, and I was just like oh my god. <laughs> my life a movie <laughs> my life is a movie bro <laughs> like this is crazy like this is crazy um so yeah that was my experience the second night the third night i in the fourth night i explained to you guys like one of the other big realizations that i had when i was sitting on the beach so i'm not going to reiterate that um but i'm just so grateful to have had that experience because oh my I want to talk about kind of some of the things that I've experienced now. My intuition is very strong and I'm, I'm loving it. My sleep quality has been much better. My relationship with food has been much better. Now when I think about doing things, I don't consult with how other people fe would feel about it. I don't, I don't think to myself like, what would be so-and-so's reaction to this? I think how I fucking feel about it. Like, do I want to send this text? Mm, if it's not a full body yes. If it's a maybe, it's a no. I've been experiencing some things that I wasn't informed could be a possibility. And I'm about to talk about sex. So if that makes you uncomfortable, you can skip. But with that being said, y'all, my experience with like sexual energy, I guess what it is is that I purged all of my trauma i've purged all of the things that have been held up inside of me that i didn't know was still there i had sex with my lover the other night my shit was wet as fuck i i i i, I, I couldn't i couldn't believe he was like what did ayahuasca do to your pussy <laughs> I was like, hey man, I don't fucking know, but this is, this is, this is great. Let me also clear the fuck a fi. This coochie been wet, all right? Coochie been wet, but the levels of 
arousal that were reached recently, did, that shit was otherworldly. And, and, and the pussy been otherworldly, you know? But it's like, I guess because my concept of my, my brain has expanded its concept and understanding of space and limitlessness and infinity that it just it just it was just like here's some more magic to 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 go into your pot we love you <laughs> i'm just so grateful to you know have that because that's such a big part of my life i feel like uh my really my sexual energy is such a big part of my my self-expression so for it to be coming from a place that is no longer slightly filled with like like shame is no longer creeping in the corner you know like we've actually been able to push through so much so much internal struggle with our sexual energy that like it honestly makes me very excited to return to only fans because i haven't been posting on there that much just because life's been doing a whole bunch so now i'm going to answer y'all's questions would you suggest everyone do it no matter the period that they are in in life no i definitely wouldn't um i was telling my partner about it and he was like that shit sounds absolutely terrifying he was like you know because when i first told him i told him i wanted him to come with me and he was like yeah he would have you know definitely been interested in coming but when i was telling him about my experience he was like you know honestly i don't feel like i would be I think I'd be really scared. I don't know if I'd be ready to confront those things. And the thing with Mother Ayahuasca is that a lot of people will say that they've experienced a calling. So I wouldn't recommend doing it until you've experienced that calling. I knew about it for a handful of years before I ended up going to Rhythmia. And I was always really excited and wanting to try it. And I, I've done so much research trying to make it happen so many times before this. And it didn't work out. So I feel like, you know, it happened in divine timing. And I definitely don't think that everyone is meant to do it um, because it is very, very, very deep work. But for me, I do acknowledge that I am most definitely who my ancestors prayed for to um, remove all of this, um, this, this weight that my family and my bloodline has, has been carrying. So if you feel that way, if you feel, if you, even if you, you don't even have to feel that way specifically, but even if you just, I feel like even if you just want to do it, you know, want to try it, you know, it's, you, you know, you could. <laughs> but I do think that it will call you, like the, the circumstance will happen and it'll just be divine. I don't think it'll always be something that you seek out. Did you have to do any preparation spiritually slash physically before the medicine? Yes, um, Rhythmia had given us like a guideline of all the the foods, food types that we should eat. So like no dairy, no refined sugar. We could eat fish and chicken. Oh, and in terms of substances, it was like, you know, no cannabis uh, for like 30 days before, like no psilocybin 30 days before, um, a lot of different things like that. Apparently the rest of my footage grew legs and walked away. So, hello, here we are, day two, or fuck, day nine. <laughs> Give it up for day 23. <laughs> How is it possible to get such a brand deal? Rhythmia aside, a lot of people have asked me this question just solely about how I work with such cool companies, especially companies surrounding um, plant-based medicine. And what I will say is that these are the tools that I give you on my YouTube master course, alchemyofcreation.org. I literally talk about all this stuff in that five week program. I'm also able to help people one-on-one -on -one expand their brand and expand their presence online um, through my consultations. So I have brand consultations and spiritual consultations for any kind of life advice that you're looking for because I have a lot of resources, know a lot of different people and I've had a lot of life experience just as it is. This is why I'm always promoting it throughout my YouTube videos because there's so much that that program has to, to offer that I feel like people are just like completely disregarding. All I did was show up on camera 10 years ago as a 13 year old and express myself authentically and I've just been doing it ever since. That's the answer to how I work with cool ass companies. 
how did the ayahuasca taste and did you throw up the ayahuasca see this is another thing i didn't think it tasted bad i really didn't i thought it was fine especially the first time i had it now what did irritate me was uh the way i had to keep drinking it i didn't like that part if you were to recommend this experience to others who have never tried this medicine what do you feel they would need to know slash understand to have the best experience personally when i was telling a lot of people about my experience um my partner ab as well i was telling her about it and i think the only kind of like preparation that you could really do would be like for me i do a lot of shadow work and which this is why i felt excited to approach my demons you know i felt excited to go into that dark basement to open that red door you know to be consumed by all of those creatures because i'm i'm always curious about how i can um, better my relationship with self, how I can reach new levels of healing and things of that sort. So I would say if you're the type of person who, I don't know, maybe like you're afraid of a lot of that stuff, I can understand like how ayahuasca wouldn't really sound interesting. I don't know. It's very, it really does depend on who you are as a person. Um, but in terms of uh, if there's anything that you could do to, you know, try to prepare or what you need to know to better, what does it say? They, what do you feel they would need to know to have the best experience? Yeah, just know self. <laughs> know thyself. <laughs> That's what you can know for sure. Um, just do a shit ton of shadow work because a lot of the, uh, all of the trials that I actually faced were things that I already knew about. They were things that I've already done a lot of work towards healing and releasing on my own. And Aya just gave it that, act that extra kick out the door. How were the classes you were required to take prior to experiencing ayahuasca? I really enjoyed all of them. I really did. Um, I'm really grateful that those um, were in place because um, definitely needed that. If not on a ex paid expense trip, would you pay to go back? The question for me is not really would I return to Rhythmia? The question for me is would I return to Ayahuasca? Cause I can't go to Rhythmia without going to Ayahuasca. Like some people opt out of the ceremonies, but I'm not going back to Rhythmia and just not doing Ayahuasca. Um, for me currently at this point in my life, um, I, 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 I've, I've had, I've had my experience, <laughs> you know? Um, I'm not going to say it's something that I'd never do again, but I will say that I can see myself doing it perhaps if I, whenever I might need another polishing of, you know, trauma and, you know, clearing out whatever I don't know has slipped through the cracks and crevices of my subconscious mind, um, in like 10 years, <laughs> I don't have any desire to go back and, and do that anytime soon. <laughs> so how has this transformation compared to your transformations through mushrooms? I really feel like she is your your teacher she is your mother and you are a three-year-old you know you can't you, like, you have free will as a three-year-old things of that sort but you know it, when it comes to an all-knowing spiritual medicine <laughs> um i definitely feel like the transformation is going to be completely completely different ayahuasca just she just she she reached into the depths of my being she she showed me past lives i was a wolf in a past life and that shit was fire okay like she just showed me a lot of things and and some things she didn't even show me she didn't even need to show me certain things she just was in that bitch vacuuming sweet doing whatever it is that she needed to do to move out whatever i needed to experience myself you know how have you learned to hear the difference between ego, intuition, and anxiety with them? When I purged on the second night, the reason that I started to go into a, a even more downward, deeper, scarier spiral is because I had purged my anxiety into the toilet. And while I was on the toilet, I was literally facing like some of the scariest thoughts in my mind like thoughts of me losing people and and dropping everything in my life and going to hawaii to i don't i don't know do something that the medicine was telling me to do so like it was like i was facing a lot of fears 
And when I purged, I asked her what that was, and she was like, anxiety. And I real I, I've been known this, but the anxiety that I was living with for years was was the biggest struggle for me. Like, and I feel like because I'm a Gemini, because I have so many air placements, because I could overthink myself into oblivion, that is why anxiety really had me like choked up, like in many in many aspects of my life. And Oh, yeah, that that was not fun. I don't that was that was one of the most difficult things to overcome um, in that experience. So but ever since like I've been able to wake up clear headed, not fucking panicking about money, not panicking about X, Y and Z, just able to like really breathe through the day without feeling because it was like, okay, I have thoughts, but I'm not having six thoughts at once. I'm not having three thoughts at once. Like I could think about some shit and push through the th thinking and like when I'm breathing, like I feel like I've been breathing more as well. So that's a that's another thing. Um, it was very interesting as well. So now I want to talk about the ego. So towards the end of the ceremonies on the third and fourth night, I noticed that my ego didn't have any roots in in my in my body in myself in my soul anymore it didn't have any like corners to hide behind or safes to lock itself into it was very exposed and very open and that's how and i knew this because it would just yell shit out in the middle of nowhere so we'd be in a ceremony and i'm like the music is too loud or I don't like her shoes <laughs> or like just some other random thoughts like that. Just very, very one dimensional, random irritations that I'm like, are you even really irritated or are you just saying this? Like, are you just wanting attention right now? And my, my ego wasn't like that beforehand. My ego was more of a smooth criminal, more of a slickster. You know, it, it would, it, I'd think thoughts and it would embed limiting beliefs into the thought. Like it wouldn't just yell out, some crazy shit because then I would turn around like, bitch, I would check it, you know? And now I've actually been able to check it. I've actually been able to acknowledge it for what it is. It's not um, discreet anymore. And my intuition, my intuition has always just been very chill. Always just been very much in my divine feminine. What are your plans for integration post-medicine? Definitely having some kind of schedule. Definitely just keeping myself um, in alignment with inspired action and you know grat 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 gratitude spirit thank you just listening to myself more bro like y'all y'all would not believe how much my thoughts really revolved around other people it was something that was so deep that i didn't even realize how deep it was so now like i've really been able to like think about things and only hear myself and not really worry about how x y and z feels about it that as well as like having a daily schedule you know waking up doing my yoga things of that sort i really want to eat at the same time every day any advice for someone who is interested but afraid for me i guess i'd i I'd, i would need to know why you're afraid anytime i go into any new medicine i'm i'm always excited so I don't feel like I can really relate to like going into it and being afraid. Like I can kind of understand if you've had an experience already and then you're afraid to go back like how I did on the second night. Like that's a little different. But if I've never experienced something and I know it's not going to kill me um, and I know that it is something that is ultimately going to be for my highest good. Um, it's a little hard for fear to interject itself into my being. So... My question to you is, what exactly are you afraid of? That's what you need to ask yourself. Um, oh, and then um, let me let me quote Rhythmia. <laughs> After you ask yourself that question, ask yourself, when was the first time I remember being afraid because of X, Y, and Z? And go even deeper into that. So I have um, Rhythmia's uh, Instagram and their website linked in the description down below. Um, I'm also hosting a retreat in Costa Rica come July of 2024, so that's going to be super fun. Um, all the links are, for that as well are in the description box down below. Um, Alchemy of Creation 
is still available. I am still accepting new clients. If you stay to this part of the video, comment the tea emoji because it kind of looks like ayahuasca. Let me know, would you try ayahuasca? Um, and if so, why would you try ayahuasca? And if you have sat with her before, give me some details on your experience. Other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to comment, like, subscribe, same as always, and you guys will see me in the next video. Peace. Some havoc, dang, that was crazy. What just happened? Just happened. Uh, I've done it millions of times, but nothing millions of times. I guess that's where we die. But I'm back as an indigo, back in the density, back to the days of three, back to the days of me, back to the days where we see trees are separate, not a part of me. Intelligence is the key. If you can unlock your mind, before you unlock your eyes, so you can transcend the times.